the end of the what we call here in Portugal the golden visa. Um, and I think it's an interesting subject uh, because, um, I mean, I guess it served its purpose. And the question is always the same. It's like, um, if you have something that is useful, do you keep it? How long do you keep it? And how long... Um, do you still need it after a certain point? You have to ask yourself that question. I guess the, the 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 Portuguese government decided that they don't need it anymore. Um, maybe maybe they shouldn't have removed it and just maybe turned it into something else. I don't know. Listen, it's up to them. Um, I also believe there was probably a lot of pressure from uh, the rest of the European countries because. So to understand what is the golden visa, the golden visa, it's something that exists in a lot of countries. Actually, uh, those those visas also exist in the U.S., for example, where uh, they call it investor invest investor visa. I think it's the E visa in the U.S., where if you invest like I think one or two million dollars in the U.S. economy, like you create a company or you buy an apartment and you bring a certain amount of money. I'm not sure how much, but I think in the US is around $2 million. Don't quote me, I'm not sure. Then you get a green card. You get the possibility to be a, a US citizen after 10 years, but they grant you the visa to come work because you bring fresh money. And uh, it's a great way to attract uh, capital. It's a great way to attract people who have money and that will spend that money inside of your country. It's nothing new. It's not something that was invented by the Portugal. It's just like, yeah, when you have money, uh, some people are interested in having you, which is something that is normal. Um, and you have to understand that back in uh, the, the at the end of the the subprime the subprime crisis, and maybe even even before, Portugal was really a country that was in crisis and it was hit hard by the economic crisis and actually the economy of Portugal was actually uh, regressing, it was really like a recession, a recession, a recession right? And uh, uh, yeah, there was no money and the country was really, I remember when I got here uh, in 2010, 2011, before I moved here, they had this thing called the Troika, where really people were suffering from the, 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 the they really had to take economical uh, uh, decisions that were hard on a lot of people. And there was, listen, there was so many buildings that were abandoned inside of Lisbon, I remember. And you could buy some of those buildings for very cheap at that time. And uh, the government decided that the best way to attract capital and to attract people that had money that would come stay there and spend that money in Portugal was to create what they called the, the golden visa. So I'm not sure when they, they created it, but uh, I mean, uh, instead of not being sure, I might just, when was the Portuguese golden visa? created golden visa program 2012 yeah you see there you go so um uh, rules governing the granting of residence permit for investment golden visa enforced from 8th of october 2012 and enable third country nationals to obtain a temporary residence permit to conduct business activities with the visa waiver to enter national territory so actually that's when i arrived that's when they also they also did that i didn't know and what the the golden visa permitted was and there's not only that one there's also a visa that is still in place which is the one for um uh, digital nomads and there's a few visa that they created to attract people from outside portugal um that had a little bit of m more money maybe than the portuguese or people like me who 
who make their money on the internet and can come live here and because they have more purchasing power they buy stuff and they they also help the economy grow and then people that are way richer than me that uh, i think the minimum that you had to spend to be part of the golden visa was 400,000 i think 400 or 500,000 so when you spend that money on an apartment or whatever you your wife or your or your husband and your kids and i think maybe your parents as well uh you get directly the portuguese residents because you get the portuguese resident you also have access to the rest of europe so you can you can buy us something here and then you can go to france you can go to the rest of 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 thing but the the goal was that people uh get those visas and then they they come live in in portugal so a lot of uh french people came and bought properties a lot of people who who are retired and had had a good revenue they couldn't maybe could not afford or maybe with the money they had uh they could afford a small place in in paris or in france but they could afford a huge place here in portugal uh and some people start buying farms and turning them into villas and a lot of people came to my neighborhood which is uh, a neighborhood for wealthy wealthy people uh and so there's been a lot of uh, rich brazilians uh, russians ukrainians uh, germans uh, united kingdom french uh, and also chinese a lot of chinese people uh, and then middle east also a lot of people with money who for example people who were in china but they have the capital and they would love to have a, a residence to be able to either leave china and come come to 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 lisbon a lot of people came to buy my name actually the owner of my house is he uh, lives in hong kong so a lot of people started uh yeah 500k okay so yeah i think that that was the i mean actually i can see it here Immigrant self, da 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 da. Capital transfer, no, no, that's not here. Golden Visa Portugal. But it changed now. Yeah, there you go. These are the options. So it can be a 1.5 million minimum capital transfer into a Portuguese bank account or approved investment or 500,000 for the acquisition of an investment fund or venture capital uh, in companies, 5,000 in research activity, da 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 da. 250k in support of artist, artistic production or, or 200,000 in a low population density area property acquisition so there's a lot of ways as you can see you can transfer capital if you just bring your money let's say you you made 10 million in crypto you just bring your 2 million here and they grant you the thing because they they wanted to have rich people there to to pull the economy up and when it comes to property acquisition, it was a minimum of 500,000 of real estate purchase, residential property to specific areas or 400,000 in a low population area means outside of Lisbon or Porto or 350 minimum real estate purchase for, for the refurb refurbishment or residential property older than 30 years. So there was a lot of old, old buildings that people bought and to, to, to redesign them and then uh or if you have a business you have to create 10 jobs or 500,000 in the incorporation or increase of the share of capital company so you have different different ways to get the that that resident permit and it would give you the possibility as a um, we had the same program in Canada you had to show that you have 1.6 million assets and you had to loan 800 to the government 
now it's 2 million in assets and 1.2 million loan to the government for five years interest free yeah so i mean every government has these options it's just that they they are making them a little higher now uh and there's a a few reasons why um so when it started actually it made a lot of especially in my neighborhood it made a lot of chinese citizens hong kong citizens and asians and brazilians and and oligarchs uh come to to lisbon and get get a a, a property for 500k because listen if you have 5 million euros and uh, a house in California or in New York or in Hong Kong costs you like a beautiful, beautiful place will cost you like three, four, five thousand, five million dollars. And you can have at that time, you could have the same type of house at 500K here in Portugal. 500K or six or 700K, you had a huge penthouse with sea views and etc back then back in 2012 when the economy was crashed completely and uh it actually served it pur its purpose because it attracted a lot of people who had revenue a lot of people uh with with big deep pockets started coming to portugal and and investing here and investing in in properties a lot a lot and uh so the first like five years, it really helped the economy go back up and it actually made Portugal a very attractive country. And because it made Portugal a very attractive country, a lot of people from, uh, it wasn't a lot of people from all these countries that had capital started coming here. And actually, it's actually one of the best countries to live in. Very safe country. Um, you are uh we all live like 10 to 30 minutes from the beach we have amazing and amazing weather uh the winter is not cold at all the winter is very warm the the the, the summer is very warm you three hours of train you are in the, the the in the south you have the, the the coast is amazing i think the whole country is actually a coast so you have the atlantic ocean and and beaches for forever uh it's actually a very very nice country to live in and uh great, the portuguese are great people uh and very welcoming and actually uh i remember when i arrived something that was quite easy is that when you go to the movies for example everything is is they don't even like uh they don't bother uh putting series and and movies in in portuguese they just let the original version of the audio in english and they just put subtitles so you can go to the movies and watch stuff in english it's cool and then it actually that's how i start learning portuguese in in the beginning was well, how i start really like training when i just arrived i was just yeah going to the movies and as i was looking at the movies i was reading the subtitles i remember i think the first movie i ever saw here was Ex expendables and i used to even go to the movies alone in the beginning when i didn't know that much people i started going to the movies alone all the time and i was reading the subtitles and, and i was understanding of course the english and uh, so it's i think the first four or five years around until 2016 maybe 16 17 yeah a lot of people started buying stuff a lot of people like me arrived in the country uh, artists and we all had we all have special benefits even in terms of taxations so uh for all of us it was yeah it was great to be here it still is great to be here uh because because people have a lower income from where i come from in paris um in in a city where everybody makes a thousand per month if you make three thousand or four thousand a month because everything is cheaper than where you come from it's so it's it's a win-win situation for you right 
And I think until 2016, 2017, it was really seen with a good eye with everybody because there was a lot of abandoned building that were bought, turned into hotels, turned into, um, turned into uh, a part, new apartments and people that were buying a lot of apartment that were abandoned. Uh, there's even like all these new expats were and these new, all these migrants were, were were creating new jobs, opening restaurants, opening bars. So there was a really like burgeoning, nice feel of of blending between the Lisboet people, uh, artists like me coming from France, or Nelson Freitas coming from Holland, and the Mika Mendes, LG. We all arrived more or less at the same time between 2012 and 2014. And yeah, listen, uh, then you had the Portugal boom. You re- you had the Portuguese boom, uh, at, I think around 2018, 2000, yeah, 2018, 2017. That was really like before maybe the, the COVID didn't, didn't help at that point, but there was really a point where you felt that Portugal was on everybody's lips. Everybody was coming to Portugal for the holidays. Everybody wanted to come here. And ev- listen, this it became like the number one destination at a point in Europe. And then you had uh, that first, w- I remember when it started, that's when you had a lot of people understanding as well. Hey, we can turn uh, uh, apart- apartments into Airbnbs. And I remember when I arrived, I remember my first my, the, the first place where I got, so I had a 70 meter square with a 100 meter uh, terrace uh, all around the, the apartment. And she wanted to sell it for 275,000 in a brand new neighborhood, brand new building. It was an amazing place. It was just just one bedroom. I needed, I needed at least two, uh, but it was for 275. That same place today would sell for six hundred thousand, probably, and and maybe more because of the terrace, maybe even seven hundred thousand. And at that time, everybody was telling me, "Oh, that's super expensive." But at that time, I remember all around me, even my building at that time, it was empty. I think it was only two of us living in that building. The rest of the building was completely empty. And. And all these building around them, around us, were not, they were not finishing. A lot of things were not finishing because of lack of budget and because people were not buying houses. And then the rent, I remember, the rents were, were not expensive as well. Until at a point, what up, Master Electronic? Until at a point, uh, when the city start getting hot and everybody start loving it, the rent start going up. And I believe that even if the goal was to give a boost to the economy, it created some perverse effects, perverse effects, and it created some greed as well. Because back in 2010, when the economy was very low here, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people were selling their apartments for 200, 250, 300 if it was big. You could find, you could, you listen, you could get an apartment for 50K. I remember back in 2007, 2006, we were talking with friends. I was like, yo, listen, you can get an apartment for 50K. I was like, 50K. And listen, I didn't have the brain I have today. Because I would have invested in those, but at that time, yeah, you could. You can even get like you could get an apartment in Avenida da Libertad, which is like the Champs Elysees of, of of Lisbon. You could get an apartment for a hundred and fifty, a big five bedroom for a hundred and fifty in in that avenue, like 15, 16 years ago. And the some rent, you know, you could you could rent places like for. I remember LG and Mika Mendes. They were they were in Montijo. They were paying I think six hundred uh, for a four bedroom with terraces everywhere, huge kitchen. Like things were so different at that time. But I think 
the fact that to in, you had to invest 500k to be able to to get the visa right so for all the owners they realized there was a lot of chinese rich people russian people uh ukrainian people uh, brazilians german french that had a lot of money that had some millionaires they knew to buy a house in portugal they needed to spend 500k anyway so a lot of people started started pushing the price of their houses to 500k and this changed the market because now the minimum price for a house was 500k because everybody knew that the golden visa people had to spend 500k anyway so everybody put start putting their houses at 500k which made the market crazy the market became hot around 2018 all the prices went up like crazy and uh there was this at the same time the fact that everybody wanted to come in portugal and listen now portugal is full of people soon as the, the sun arrived in april it's full of people who, who love to come to this country it's an amazing city the problem is that a lot of owners as well started only investing in apartment for short-term rental instead of doing an apartment and trying to sell it a lot of people started to buy a building and instead of doing like a i don't know 10 200 meter square apartments or or 20 100 meter square apartment everybody started just doing 40 50 meter uh one or two bedrooms apartments and just putting them into airbnb because at that time it was also the explosion of airbnb an explosion of tourism so portugal was hot portugal was really the country where everybody wanted to go and everybody was calling me about portugal oh my god i can't believe you there it's amazing blah blah blah, blah. and the prices of the rents just went up because the city was full of people so it's just the law of offer and demand if you have high offer and low demand there's not enough apartments because nobody thought it would just shoot up like this and uh, all these tourists are there they need a place to stay and they have money so the people who have apartments just they, they raise their price they don't care so the prices went up and a, a lot of people started investing here but not to live here a lot of people they invested 500k let's say you have 10 million you invest 500k in portugal you buy a place but you leave it empty because actually you just want to go live in france but it's harder to get the visa in france so a lot of people would, would just use that visa to just come here and go live somewhere else and they, they would just buy something and because they knew that the minimum was 500 anyway so they would not care they would just say yeah yeah yeah, buy that place yeah yeah even a place that would was worth like five i don't know 200k they would buy it 500 so all the prices went up uh the the the, the, the city became saturated and the prices of the rents went up so to give you an, an example i live in the in, a, in the rich neighborhood and when i arrived the rent for a two-bedroom apartments in this neighborhood in front of the water was uh so i live in part that's not so much for those who know the price for a two-bedroom apartment everything i visited was around 900 to 1000 per month that was 10 years ago today if i leave this apartment to go in another two-bedroom apartment the prices will be 2000 2005 it's crazy the city just became uh super expensive just because there's not enough buildings and most of the buildings that are built are built for a uh, high income for rich people most of the buildings that are built in lisbon are 
people who are doing luxury apartments so and if they sell them they sell them minimum 600 700 800 1 million 1 million five prices that listen sometimes i say to myself i should have bought something like 10 years or even 15 years ago for 150,000, I would have had like a 200 meter square that I would have sold today for a million and something. Or or maybe I would just stay there and chill. But it is what it is. You you learn from these and you 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 think for the rest. And but interestingly, the fact that the prices to own a place shoot up, the place the 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 people like me who who arrive early i mean i would not say we were the culprit because we arrive we really early but the generation after us the people who came around 2016 17 18 and especially a lot of americans like at a point the americans got fed up with the politics out there um all the division in their country and the high price of living and the fact that america is not safe uh to a lot of people they had this idea that it was a country that was not safe school shootings whatever all these things that happen in america a lot of people decided we want to move to europe and all of them they were like yo portugal is the thing that looks the more the most like california a lot of people that live in california they would just come here and a lot of people with money millionaires crypto millionaires etc etc uh, or digital a lot of people started coming here and those who had a lot of money they just bought houses for 500k which for them compared to montecito calabasas uh la etc where to get a nice a nice uh three bedroom apartment or four bedroom apartment you need at least a million or two million in the good neighborhoods here for 500k you could do it so a lot of them they just start coming here and the prices just went up and now if you want a, a four bedroom apartment if you if you don't i mean depending on where of course where you want to live but if you want to live in lisbon if you want to live Listen, Lisbon is great, it's safe everywhere, but if you want to live in a neighborhood like mine, for example, if you want a four bedroom apartment in my in my line in front of the water, if you don't have a million, forget it. Or listen, seven, eight hundred thousand minimum, but a million to have one of those nice apartments. That's what I'm shooting for, actually. And if you want to rent, because of all the digital nomads, people like me who make money from the internet, uh and they don't make the we don't make the same money as Portuguese people who make the minimum wage here is 800. Uh, if you make 5k per month or more, yeah, listen, you can you can actually come and rent, and a lot of those people start coming from from America, and the the price of the rent just went up. Uh, and you don't you're not gonna build all the apartments that are needed um uh, in six months you need two years to build a good building and the problem is most people who are investing in buildings they're not interested in building stuff for they're not interested in building stuff for the for 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 people who don't have a lot of money they're not interested in doing social stuff they're interested in doing those beautiful nice buildings especially in my neighborhood some nice building and, and 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 have rich people in there that are ready to pay for a million or more so listen that's the market the market goes the way the market goes the only problem is that this created a complete impossibility for the real portuguese people who are from lisbon to live in lisbon because the rent was too high for the Lisbon people, the original people from Lisboa. So all of them had to start living outside of Lisbon and leave Lisbon to the strangers. And it makes no sense. It's not fair. Uh, even if it's offer and demand. This was also created by 
artificially by the fact that if you had money you were granted uh those those things so the sentiment uh of anger towards these law and the sentiment that it's unfair started growing up and i believe that the europe the, the european union was also seeing that a lot of chinese citizens and, and and other nationalities were using portugal to just say oh listen if my whole family can have the european access from wherever i come from i'm i'm, I'm congolese and i have and i have money i can just get the port just buy something for 500k in in portugal and we all have portuguese residency and poof we leave congo and we just come here and actually we don't even live in lisbon we buy a place we don't care we find we put somebody to rent or whatever or we just leave it there empty and we go live in belgium uh a lot of people started using the visa not as a way to come live in portugal but as a way as a gateway to the rest of Europe. So, you know, people will always game system, use the system for whatever reasons, it is what it is, but uh, it became, yeah, a little unfair and seen as unfair for a lot of the Portuguese people. So the pressure started from not only the Portuguese people, but also as, as I believe the European government who was like, yo, uh, I'm France, I'm making it hard to get a visa to get in my country, but if they just go to 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 these poor people out there and they buy f a thing for 500k, now they can come to my country uh, without doing the, the, the rules that I want. So people, you know, and you know, the French, the Germans, the, 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 the Dutch, they see Portugal, Spain like poor countries. So... Yeah, they started pushing the pressure, putting the pressure, and I think because of all this, uh, this year, the, it was decided that actually this month, it's it's effective this month, the golden visa is over. And um, will it stop the flux of um, of people who have money? I don't think so because a lot of people still love the country and there's still other types of visa like the like the digital nomad visa and you, you can still as an investor portugal still love their flux of new money so and they are building the 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 the, the, the portuguese silicon valley uh, in beato and they want all these companies to come here and if all these companies, all the startups start coming to Portugal where the Web Summit is, like they've been doing everything for Lisbon to be an attractive capital and don't get it twisted. A lot of other countries are now, um, are now understanding. It's not like countries like France who, who they always want to say, hey, don't do what I do. Uh, but uh, they, they love to, to, to prevent you from doing stuff that they do. Uh, the, the French people, they what they hate is that the capital is not coming to their country. That's the only thing for them. It's just competition. But a lot of other countries like uh, Cap Verde, for example, are starting to also propose uh, some digital areas like in, in Mindelo, in Cap Verde. You, you, they're, really, they're really doing this, this digital hub where you can have like uh, creative spaces, Wi-Fi, etc. They are investing this in this because they know that the the workers of the future are, are a lot of people who work from their laptop. So the, these people, they're not interested in uh, uh, the same thing as people 20 years ago. They just want to know. Hey, do I have a good internet connection so I can work, so I can do my live stream on YouTube, or so I can do my Zoom sessions, or so I can work on my my stock options or my crypto? So I need a good internet connection, and I need a place that is safe with a very nice view, etc. So places like Portugal, places like uh, Cap Verde, places like Senegal, places like all these countries that have these these uh, different uh, setups if they can find um I, I was in dakar the other time and listen the neighborhood where we were uh, at the hotel 
I was looking at the apartment facing the sea. I was like, yo, interesting. And we're going to slowly be in a world where if the people make, if, if a lot of people start making the, their money just from the internet, what they're looking for is not where I can get a good job. They're looking for where can I make a good living? Where can I have quality of life, safety, and uh, the best uh, the best service for my money? So let me give you my example. For example, I generate a lot of money from the internet and I exclusively I went from generating money from shows and selling CDs to now everything is the streams and the YouTube views this is generating yeah more than 10 times the the the, the, the salary of, a, an, of an average Portuguese person so I can live where I want Tomorrow, I can take my whole family and we can go live anywhere I want. Because, listen, if I look, for example, let me see. Uh, rent uh, an apartment in Bangkok. To give you an example. Let's say I'm tired of here and I want, let me see. I don't even know where I know the type of apartments I want, but let me see. Uh, so to give you an example, oh my God, that's in bat. Okay. Let me put it in euros. Let me, let me put it in dollars. No, in euros. I prefer in euros. All right. Let's say I want to live in Bangkok. I want an apartment of, uh, minimum of three bedrooms and I want to live uh, in an apartment and can I choose where all right let me see look for Bangkok also is becoming a little more expensive than back in the days but look uh, let me see if I recognize a neighborhood that is nice. What the, no, no, I don't know this neighborhood. But look, for example, in Tonglor, I know, I know this one. I know this neighborhood. So for two, that's a little expensive. Okay. I mean, I can afford that for two thousand and seven hundred. Let me see. Let me let me put a maximum of two thousand. Max price two thousand. This is something I can afford easily. Uh, all right. So now it depends of the neighborhood, of course. Uh, so let's say I'm spending. Bang now. Listen, I don't know all these neighborhoods. Bangna, Watana. The problem is I don't know what is a good neighborhood. I know, I know, I know my friend used to live in Tonglor. So can I choose Tonglor? Okay, something near trans near a transport station. Uh, okay, Bangkok area. I know that. Shamburi. Okay, listen, let's see what I don't, I don't listen. I don't know if it's a good neighborhood in Bangkok, but ima let's imagine it's a good neighborhood. So for uh, 2,317 a month, which is perfect, I can have a 237 meter square with three bedrooms, which is amazing. Or for, look at this. Look at this, two, two floors. Or... Two hundred meters square. 
240 meters square. That's a lot. I'm trying to find the best bang for my buck, but 200 meters square is, is more than enough. Uh, look at this. Uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know, that's near the airport. Two, so listen, I can get three bedrooms and 230 meters square, which is like three times where I'm living right now, almost. And I can have that in Bangkok. So if I find something like this that I like, I don't like this place. But a guy like me that is making way more than 6,000 a month from my, my, my different businesses, Listen, I can decide one day that I want to live anywhere. If I want to go live in Bangkok, if I want to go live in uh, in um, if I want to go live in in Spain, if I want to go live in Italy, if I want to go live in Bulgaria, if I want to go live in Senegal, listen, I can take my whole family and decided that yo we're moving in two months and we just bounce and. A lot of countries are looking for people like me and up. I'm, you have people, listen, you have some, some young people, they made like $100 million in crypto and they can go live anywhere. They can go live in Dubai. They can go live da, 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 da. And where they live is where they're going to spend their money. And where they spend their money is going to be money that is going to get for the, to the States to the local economy, to all the restaurants, etc. I remember when I arrived here, there was a lot of restaurants that were empty. There was a lot of, 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 of places that were deserted. There was a lot of abandoned factories. It was really like a, it was like a, a, a bet to come here. And it was the right bet. I, 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 I sniffed good as always. And now everything is full. Now, like, listen, you have sky bars everywhere. You have all these places. At least it's, it's always it's always been since I've been coming in 2003. It's been it's always been an amazing country, but I, I didn't think about living here at that time. But today, yeah, uh, people like me. Uh, it's not even just about. I mean, I, I'm not the 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 person that needs the golden visa because I'm somebody that I'm I'm a French citizen. So as a European citizen, I can live anywhere in Europe. So when I decided to come, I just decided to come. I just came in, in May 2012. I just, I just came. And I was just, okay, I live here now. That's it. And then I, after that, I established my, my residency and stuff. But I didn't need to become a resident of Portugal. All I needed was a place because I have a French passport. Now, guys like me we are con we are going to continue to come because the golden visa is not something that i'm interested in what i'm interested in is being in a place that is safe for my kid where i can have a good school and where i can have a nice place to live for my money so 10 years ago yes for my money i could have a much better place uh but even today uh Listen, if I if I move here and I find a three bedrooms, that's what I'm looking for, for two k a month. Oh uh, yeah, I'm, I'll do it. And uh, if my goal is to move when I'm ready to buy something, but listen, I'm, I need a bigger place. I need to have an office, etc. So I'm I'm. I'm also looking at the market because the market can go down a little bit, maybe because there's a lot of a lot of pressure on the market because of all these people that are buying. I'm looking at, you know, world economic crisis, etc. I'm looking at all these things to 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 decide when I'm making my moves. But there's a lot of these people who are digital nomads uh, that are crypto people that are uh influencers internet people that are making money on chain that in people that could live anywhere are people that a lot of countries are interested in um now without the golden visa a lot of people will still come come here because a lot of americans yeah they, they just don't want to live in america anymore a lot of french people are also done with france uh like me a lot of uh people are still moving to this country 
uh, for all the rest of the reasons, not just for uh, uh, the golden visa. A lot of people don't need golden visa. Like I said, a lot of Europeans are still moving to Spain, to Portugal, etc. And listen, the people who have a lot of money, don't worry for them. They'll find a way. They'll get a good lawyer and they will come in. So uh, all, I, all I hope now is that uh, maybe this will also make give less pressure and less incentive to a lot of people to sell their apartment at the highest price that they were selling them. And maybe the prices will go down a little bit, especially if uh, there's no more incentive to some people to just buy for the sake of buying. The people who will buy are the people who really want to live here. And I think they are also doing some laws so that there's less Airbnb because there's a lot of places that are just Airbnb. So, and I also think the, the city should, and I mean, they are doing it, but they have to build more apartments. You need, for all these new people that are there, you just have to build more so that the, the offer can reach the demand and then the price pressure will go down and, and, Portuguese people will also be able to live in Lisbon, which is, which makes sense. Um, so listen, we'll see what happens. I don't have a, I don't know the future, but uh, it's been, it's been very interesting to see uh, what happened in the last 10 years and, and, and we'll see. We will see what's going to happen.